Six days following a WCW Saturday night taping on August 10th, you lost to Lord Steven Regal. Then you worked a dark match at the WWF Wrestling Challenge taping in Lowell, defeating longtime WWF enhancement talent Barry Hardy. We're going to go to this match right now and take a little watch and listen. This was some new new stuff. Yeah, the audio is horrible. Um, but I do love to see Barry Hardy there. I love to see a young Timmy White back there as the referee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, this was Lowell Mass, man. It was a great little building, um, and I we're going to talk about this, how this all came about here shortly. Um, but it, but here I came out straight off. It looked like I just like I uh, just like I wrestled in WCW. You know what I mean? Just like I there's the Georgia. Uh, it's a it's a knockoff Ribera jacket, but it says Georgia on it. I've got the braids in. I just wore the bl baby blue or uh, excuse me, the royal blue baby face trunks, knee pads, and, high and wrestling energy, boots, and lapping and, the <laughs> ring with yeah. the fist pumping for the crowd. Oh yeah, I'm baby face all the way. I'm running for friggin' governor here in Lowell, <laughs> and uh, and the truth be told is <laughs> I watched it. I watched this with my old or my youngest daughter yesterday, and she said, "For the love of God, I don't ever want to see you like that again." <laughs> because I had regular trunks on, she had never seen me work like that. Um, and, and it's great talk about seeing you work like that. It is a different style than the, than what we're used to. I mean, just look at it. You're taking the aggression in the in the wrestling and technician style. Oh, oh right yeah. Here. Well, this was look at. You, you know, today, if I tried to do this in a ring, people would crap on me because it's try. You know, it's that white meat baby face thing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do that here. And if you do that today, look, that's what that, that all changed with Stone Cold. I don't know if it'll come back or not. Uh, that white meat baby face. But look, I had no clue what I was doing. And, and another story about this uh, is. Beautiful I didn't have a finish right there. Followed by a drop I, I, oh, kick, a drop lands kick. in the face, and then pumps up the crowd. You see, Timmy White says, "Hey, watch the fist," and I gotta like break the fist. It's real, you know what I mean? Like, I, that's what I love about it. I love watching. Like, okay, this was a different time and era. Um, but it. Uh, what were we talking about other than we're, this match? Just, I mean, we're in the whole vibe of this match and yeah, breaking in. Look at a, look at a uh, Timmy White man. Is such a uh, look. I have no idea what I'm doing right here. Oh, gut wrench salto. I've seen somebody do this, but I did it standing. It didn't even fall down with him. <laughs> Oh, I'll drop a leg. Ghost nope, he's coming up. Right yeah, there yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, hey, well, neither one of them. I mean, he knew what he was doing because he'd worked for, I, this was my, you know, 50th match probably. And and this match is pretty much considered a tryout at this point for 100%, you with WWF, right? 100%. This was right before the show started on TV. There was This was, they just put me with him and said, we need an eight-minute match with you. See Roll what you can do. two count, says, come on, bring it yeah, on, Harvey. Yeah. He's going to get some heat on me in a minute. We're going to get a chance for the uh, for the upper echelon to watch me sell a little bit. See what happens. Oh, kick, to, kick the to the gut. Follow Ooh. with the right hand. Has you staggered. Stagger, Backed stagger. up into the corner. Crawl, crawl. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, it was, look, I, the interesting part of this it, to me is not the wrestling aspect of it, but what we're going to talk about probably next is, uh, is how, what else happened this night. You know what I mean? Uh, some more stuff that really was more important to me than this wrestling. And we'll, we'll cover that here in just a second, but you can see now I'm, you know, I took a couple of bumps for him and it wasn't like I did it for him. It was just like, I wanted him to get on me a little bit so they could see, uh, you know, it's also, you make your opponent. I hear that all the time. Oh, we had a squash match and I get it. There's a spot for that. Um, the Veer Mahal or the, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? The warlord or whatever that Wardlow or whatever that guy's name is. Yep. If they wanted to feed him some people, I would understand that. Um, but if we're just out there working a match, cold match, Nobody knows either one of us. I got to prop him up a little bit too. You know what I mean? That's the psychology. I shine. He shuts me down. I do a hope spot. He cuts me off. Finish. You know what I mean? Like whatever. Ducks the clothes. I still I still didn't know how to hit those ropes. Cross those ropes body. are, are uh, shorter and real ropes. And WCW's ropes to. were tall and toyed as a toyger. You know what I mean? Like they were, you could uh, eat dinner on those things and they wouldn't move. <laughs> Hardy yeah, has you I in the think, corner. Uh, oh, taking yeah, a big one yeah. up a little, a little high right there. Looks like a throw me, to the face right shot there. Shot me right in the throat. <laughs> Barry Hardy, you son of a bee sting. So oh, how no, does this a, tryout match come about? Who contacts you about doing it, especially so, when you're already working for WCW? Oh. Um, so 
it was Man Mountain Rock, Max Payne. Is, all right. is the guy who facilitated all of this, and it was all about uh, music. There's some jabs that I did up front. Oh, and a kick in the and face. And a big in a big boot. And here comes Wait, this is here amazing, comes what dog. the brawler said. Bro- Brooklyn Baller said, "Well, your brother was up here. He used a drop kick off the top row." I said, "Okay." Oh now, God! I'll never do that again. As, long as, as he I was live. getting up, how happy were you to see him feed up towards uh, yeah, the quarter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was pretty closer far to away me. at first. Yeah. Oh, I was thanking God. <laughs> he I was, was thanking God. Clear. So, 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 yeah. Let's let's uh, get out of there and talk about. You, you ask me who, who kind of got me there. It was it was so Max Payne uh, facilitated the the tryout. What was interesting about the tryout is before all that happened, and I had the match and everything. Max and I. Uh, and an acoustic guitar, and Vince McMahon, and Pat Patterson, and Gerald Briscoe, and I think Bruce Pritchard. I don't. I'm, I don't think Shane was there. I'm not sure, hundred percent sure of that, but he might have been. But we literally played like three songs, just there in front of them acoustically, and I sang, and and then I went and had the tryout, and they were like, okay, we'll be in touch, and uh, so I sang. I sang. Uh, you know the song Four Non Blondes, uh, What's Going On? Yes. I sang that, that I, wa- that I wasn't bad. You know, it was a long time ago. I was young, uh, and I needed the money. Um, but I wasn't, wasn't too bad at singing that song. The velvety smooth. Live. Yeah, I wasn't velvety smooth. It was, uh, it was my own thing. But I sang that song, and I think I sang, like, Plush by Stone Temple Pilots. And... Uh, I'm not sure there was one more that I did, but those were the songs I sang in front of those guys. And they, you know, they had always wanted to sing in Cowboy. That's what my brother was. My brother Steve was Lance Cassidy, and he was going to do the same thing. When Jeff went up there, they saw the opportunity. They were like, oh, here we go. You know what I mean? Let's do it with him. Then we do this with Jeff. Then we do, you know what I mean? And all of that was to prop me up. But little did I know, life had different plans for me. (laughs) Seeing as you were on WCW less than a week previous, did Bischoff or anyone at WCW talk to you about it? No. Uh, no, because like I said, I wasn't contracted. I literally okay. received uh, $350 every week, and, and I could do indies on the weekends. And so that's what I was doing and living with my brother Brad and Marietta. And uh, and no, nobody talked to me. Nobody said one word about it. You know what I mean? We actually played a, uh, like a showcase thing with, with me – uh, Nick Patrick, the referee, as it was the bass player. The, the band was called Living Insanity, and, uh, and and we actually have some have some music that's really cool that uh, that we may actually end up putting out in the future. But it's really cool. And and uh, Max Payne, Nick Patrick, me had a drummer and a bass player and a keyboard guy, and uh, we had a showcase where we sang some songs in front of Eric Bischoff and some and some people, and they he, he wouldn't take it. He was like, "We're a wrestling show. We don't have a." But I thought, okay, that makes sense. You know what I mean? I get that. Um, but so, yeah, then he got me up there. We sang in front of him. I did that match, and the rest is history, you know. What did you notice as the differences between the WWF and the WCW locker rooms? I don't, you know, I don't think there was many differences. I know there was, uh, it seemed younger, and, and I know there were probably some some older guys at the time, but it just seemed younger to me. WCW had a lot of guys. Look, I was 25, 20, yeah, 25 or something, 24 maybe. So I, I didn't – everybody was old to me. You know what I mean? My brother Brad was six years older than me, and he was old to me. So, so Sting and Flair and – you know what I mean? All those people were older than I was anyway. So it felt like it was a younger uh, – dare I say it started to get hungrier coming up soon. You know what I mean? As, all right, we're getting into the meat and potatoes of what we want to talk Yummy. about. Yeah, I'm hungry. So at this point, have you been having discussions with anyone at WWF since the tryout back in August? No, not until they called me and offered me a, a deal. So then who called you and made that and made that a reality? Uh, it was JJ at the time. Yeah, cool. JJ Dillon. Uh, he was he was the heater. Uh, so so he did he he took all the heat and and got all the work done. Um but yeah, so they called me, dude. They offered me uh, five years for a hundred grand a year, and all I saw was half a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I quit about eight months in. But then the next time, they, they, the contracts work in a way where that was my guaranteed minimum. You know what I mean? And so whether I did anything or not, look, 
at this point, I had been making three fifty a week and uh, and doing some indie shows on the weekend for a hundred dollars or fifty dollars or whatever, a uh, hundred if my dad was on the show with me. <laughs> so, but uh, but you know, so so I just I forgot what we were talking about again. Hit that.